My name is Nicole B. Senor. If you see the computer right here, it's just from my slides. So today I'll be doing my TED Talk presentation on something that is very important to me as well as very inspirational. And this is a global issue. And that's giving people access to clean drinking on something that is very important to me as well as very doing my TED Talk presentation on something that is very important to me as well as very inspirational. And this is a global issue. And that's giving people access to clean drinking water. From the ages 0 to 4, child deaths may be reduced, and this would be the outcome. If you didn't know, 663 million people worldwide do not have access to clean drinking water. This is an issue. The contaminated water that these people are drinking from contain diseases such as cholera. And here's a list of a few others. We have cholera, salmonella, we also have typhoid, and we also have polio. Diarrhea, though, is one of the top causes of deaths for contaminated drinking water. So diarrheal deaths are known to cost 485,000 deaths each year. So let's talk about the economic effects. Economically, people will spend less money on medical costs so they can be able to be more productive in their community um, or the place that they're living. And also, people will spend less time physically collecting water in villages. Let's talk about the social um, effects and benefits. So from the ages 5 to 14, children, especially girls, will be able to attend school a lot more often. Children can escape poverty, and men, women, and children will all be able to have improved health. So disease from uh, dirty water kills more people every year than all forms of violence, including war. 43% of these deaths are children un under the age of 5. So what are the challenges of this? Well, here's an example. Right here, we have no data, which is a white box, and we also have 0 to 25%. So here's an example of this. You see in the United States, we are completely red. That means that we, as the United States, have 75 to 100% access to clean drinking water. However, Africa has either 0 to 25%, or we don't have data on it. And that's the hard part about it, is that if we don't have data to those places, it will be hard to reach the meat. Here's another example. As you can see here, this is a map of people who don't have access to clean drinking water. And the United States has 0 to 9%. So that means that we, the United States, out of all of us, 0 to 9% of us do not have access to clean drinking water. Versus Africa, where it's either 20, 25 to 50%, or more than 50% of Africa do not have access to clean water. As well as places in the Middle East and countries in Asia. So we've heard of the reuse of water, like water systems, and we've also heard the reuse of energy, which is a lot more common now that we have the technology for it. So today, I want to introduce you to a man named Scott Harrison. So all of his life, health is super important to him. When he was younger, his mother's immune system had died in a gas leak in his home. From then on, the rules reversed with his mother, and he took care of her, he took care of the house, he cleaned the dishes, super young, and while all doing that while being an American student. So here's just a few pictures of Harrison doing what he loves most, and this is mostly pictures of him in Uganda. And up here is him doing a hand-dug water well system, which I'll talk about later. So Harrison wanted to become a doctor after that experience with his mother. And it never did come true though, but he was able to finish his education at New York University. Harrison became a nightclub promoter, and he got filthy rich off of just scamming people into buying things that should be cheap, but he made them expensive. He got involved in alcohol and drugs, and he just got addicted. So he realized after a while what he was doing was horrible, and it was bad, it was wrong, which is true in some ways. And what he wanted to do is he wanted to make a difference. But not just a difference in his community, but make a worldwide difference. And so this is where all ties in. He applied to multiple different organizations, and he got denied by every single organization because of his past. Except one. <coughs> And this organization is called Mercy Ships. What is Mercy Ships? What the heck is that? <laughs> so Mercy Ships is a nonprofit organization and uh, basically floating hospitals. And they go to the places that I showed you on the map where it's Africa, Middle East, and Asia. And what they do is they perform surgeries. In order to be a part of Mercy Ships, Harrison had to pay $500 to be able to be in it. So Harrison's job was to take photos. So he took 50,000 photos of what the nonprofit was doing. So basically the surgeries of people who had leprosy, tumors, or like, or, or cleft lips. So 
what he did is he emailed this to a distribution list of 15,000 people when he was back in, as a promoter in New York, a nightclub promoter, just to show people the difference that he was doing. So when uh, Harrison was in Africa, he did some research and he realized that 3 in 10 people do not have access to clean drinking water around the world. And he made some other observations and noticed that the women and girls would spend countless hours a day getting water for their families rather than getting an education. And he was ready to change that. So he went back to New York City and finally started Charity Water. So here's a picture of him promoting uh, Charity Water just in the very beginning. So for his 30th birthday, he threw it on a club. And what he did is he charged people $20 at the door, whoever came through. And what's great about this is that he raised enough money that he was able to go back to Africa and continue his journey. And this is him promoting Charity Water in the very beginning. So what makes him so important? What did he do? Well, Harrison, uh, Scott Harrison is the founder of Charity Water, which is now a nonprofit organization in New York that is super successful. So their goal overall is to provide clean drinking water to people all over the world. And here's just a few pictures of them promoting Charity Water just to show what they do. So Charity Water has been around since 2006, and they've been in the making of 52,000 water projects around, like in 28 different countries. So the way that they provide these people with clean drinking water is they have different types of systems. So they, had, they have hand uh, dug well systems, drilled systems, they also have rainwater catchments, and gravity fed systems, which is all, there's multiple different types of ways to do it. So they work with different types of organizations. Here's just to list a few. Clear Cambodia, Splash, and World Vision. And there's multiple others on their website, if you just look it up. And how are ways that you can get involved? Well, there's multiple. So they have one where you could donate, where you could just pay 30 bucks, or you could do 100, or you could do 200. And then they also have one where you can do something crazy or adventurous or just creative to raise money. And my personal favorite is giving up your birthday to fundraise money for Charity Water, which is now a tradition. So people all around the world will don donate or give up their birthdays just to donate money. So what they would do is they'll go on their website and press pledge. And what they do is they put their name and their birthday. So with, what, for example, Mr. Wyden's birthday. And you can put whatever type of money that you want, like what's your goal, like whether it's 5,000, whether it's 500, does not matter. It will 100% the profits will go to Charity Water. So that's where they are today. They're still fundraising and they're still helping countries around the world. Thank you.